What's going on guys, John Alder here from Codeby.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to reset a spin box with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to reset a spin box. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Monday morning here in Vegas. Hope you guys had a great weekend. And somebody asked this question in the comments this morning, so I thought, hey, we'll do a quick video on it. So we've got a spin box and we've looked at spin boxes in the past. We've got a video on that, oh, 20 or 30 videos back in the playlist. You can check the comment section below for a link to that if you want to watch it in the playlist. And it's okay, we've got this spin box, right? So we can spin through numbers, names, strings, text, anything we want. And these can be pretty big. So let's say we've got, you know, we're up on number 80 now and we want to get back to zero. We can click this and just go back to zero, but that's kind of a, you know, a drag, it's kind of a pain. How do we just reset back to zero? Well, we can click this button and boom, we go right back to zero. How do we do that? Well, it's a little complicated and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video now. All right, so head back over to our code here. I've got a file I'm calling spinner.py. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. We've got our basic starter code that we always have. And now let's just create really quickly a spin box. So let's go my underscore spin and this is gonna be a spin box. We wanna put it in root and we want to go from underscore equals zero. We want to start at zero. We want to go to equals, let's say 100. And remember from is a Python keyword, right? So like up here, we're importing from Kinter. So we can't use regular from, we have to use from underscore. So we're going to go from zero to 100. And let's just give this a font of, let's say Helvetica and make this like 20 just to make it bigger so it's easier to read. And that should do that. So let's go my underscore spin dot pack and give this a pad Y of 20 just to push down the screen a little bit. Now let's go ahead and save this and run spinner.py just to make sure that worked. So let's go Python spinner dot pi. And we get the spin box and we can spin around and it looks like it works. So, okay, that's easy. We already know how to do that. How do we now reset this back to zero? Well, let's come down here. Let's create a button. Let's go my underscore button. And that's going to be a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal, let's say reset spinner. And let's give this a command of reset. And then let's go ahead and my button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20 just to push it down the screen a little bit. So let's come up here and let's create this reset function. So define reset. And for now, I'm just going to pass. So what we can do here is a spin box will accept a text variable. And a text variable we can then update using a kinter int var or string var. Remember, we've looked at int vars and string bar vars in the past way back in the beginning of the playlist, we don't use them all that often, but they're sort of like a special variable for kinter, right? So Kinter allows you to update them behind the scenes and then they just sort of do their thing. So we can create one, I'm gonna call it var and we can set this equal to an int var and we want this to be on root, right? So now this var variable, we can get it, we can set it, we can do things with it like we normally would with a Kinter, with a Kinter widget. So let's go var dot set and let's set this to zero, right? So since we're using an int var, int stands for integer, integers are whole numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, we can just do zero here instead of like putting in quotation marks like that. So now we can just come down here to our spin box and let me just kind of put these on separate lines so it's easier to read here. We can just call a text variable and set that equal to var, right? So this will by default set our spin box at zero. If you wanted to start it on like 20, you could. You could just set this variable to 20. Now this will be 20 and our spin box will start on 20. In fact, let's just save this and try that to see. So let's run this real quick and boom, sure enough, it starts on 20, right? So that's cool. That's kind of interesting on its own. If you want to set a specific position in your spin box right from the beginning, that's how you do it. Well, okay, that's interesting, but how does that help us reset the thing? Well. 
easy. We could just come up here into our reset function. And let me just copy these two things. And now I'm going to set it to whatever I want to set it to when we hit the button, reset it to zero, for instance. And now we can just go my underscore spin dot config, like we always have in the past. And we can now just config this guy to whatever we want this var will now be zero because we're setting it in this function, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. And it starts out on 20 because we set it to 20. I can move it around to whatever. I can reset it. Boom, it goes right back to zero. So even if we uh, cycle this thing all the way up to like 100, oh, da, 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 going, 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 70, 80, 90. Okay, so we're all the way up to 100. It will just bang, bop it right back to zero. And just that easy. So that's int var. Like I said, we've also in the past looked at string var. So let's say uh, set int var. Well, what if instead we wanted to set string var? Well, we could do that. We could go uh, var to, let's call this, and this is going to be a string var. Notice the S and the V are both capitalized. Same thing up here, the I and the V are both capitalized. And we wanna put this in root. And let's set this now, dot set. And instead of a number, let's set this to John, right? So down, down here, instead of setting this from zero to 100, right? In fact, let me just grab this and just sort of comment it up here. Instead of that, what we could do is change this to, to words, right? So we could say values equal. And then inside of here, we could say John, we could say Mary, we could say Bob, we could say anything we want, right? So set this to Tina. So we've, now we've got four names in here and we're still putting this to var two, which is John. And now we can, Save this and run it just to make sure that worked real quick. And sure enough, we got John, we can spin up to Mary, Bob and Tina. Okay, so that worked. And just the same way, if we want to re reset this, we can, uh, let's kind of grab this and paste it again. And let's come out, out these. And instead of int var, of course, we want string var. And instead of zero, we want to reset this to John. And here we can set this to, well, let's, let's change this to var two, just to be consistent here. Okay, so now if we save this, and let's give this a run. So we're at John, we can spin up to Tina, reset it, boom, goes back to John, just that easy. So tons of different reasons why this might be useful if you're using spin boxes. I'm kind of surprised I didn't explain this when I first talked about spin boxes months ago, but I guess I just overlooked it. But obviously you need to know how to do this and not that hard. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, save pages, $49 taxes, all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books, doing over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.